What is geofencing? Geofencing is the combined technology of using global positioning satellites and handheld receivers such as a Martin smartphone that can create fenced-in areas for specific geographic areas, regions, city districts, and localized zones. This is all done by using degree coordinates assigned to longitude and latitude fence posts. Those that enter this fenced-in area or leave it are identified and if they are carrying a powered-on smartphone are broadcasted a message determined by the creators of the geofence itself. The public. In most cases, the public would be unaware if they were entering a geofence zone until they receive some form of communication, either being text message, email, or social media notification, telling them so. It requires little effort on part of the end user other than knowing if his or her G GPS receiver is active. Interaction. At the point of entry or exit, end users of geofencing technology are essentially consumers of information. They simply take the information they have received and make use of it in whatever manner they see fit. For example, a geofence may be established in a large construction zone, such as the World Trade Center, and digital reminders can be sent to those entering the area that they need to be wearing a construction hat. Cost One simply does not create a geofence without purpose in mind. As such, there is not a very large cost output since most of the technology re resides in space and in the pockets and purses of those who are entering and leaving the fenced-in geographical area. There will be need for oversight in terms of messages, email generated, and civil overseeing of data collected from those coming and going, but in most cases it can be fairly autonomous. Barriers There are a few barriers to rolling out this form of technology. It would require permissions to be sent by smartphone users for location services. As, as well, it would require all users to have their GPS receiver to be turned on. It would require that previous information be shared, such as your cell phone number and even contacts on your contact list. While this delimits much of the general population, geofences tend to work around defined users, say students of an institution, for example, who have accepted terms and conditions through an app installation or third-party software. Furthermore, large urban centres with very tall high-rise buildings may not be best suited for geofences, as it tends to be very difficult to have a constant signal between the device and the satellites. Novelty as the proliferation of smartphones with GPS receivers increases, the possibility of geofencing become more prevalent also increases. There are very unique opportunities to tag and identify, by device, who has entered a specific area, how long they remain, and when they leave. The amount of unique information that could be collected, based on time, user and location, becomes very worthwhile analytical information for those who are collecting the data. Speed. In terms of speed, messages can be sent and received instantly. It would be similar in nature to someone leaving their proprietary cell provider and entering a cell that would be considered roaming. It happens instantaneously, as long as the device can communicate with the satellite and cell provider. The delivery of messages within a geofence would be comparable to RS feeds or push notifications for apps. Educational Applications In an educational setting, geofences can easily serve a variety of purposes. On a broad scope, they would be able to inform students of specific school calendar events as they enter the property. If a school was large enough, because of the nature of GPS, it could inform students, for example, that computer lab in the south wing was closed for hardware upgrades. If an institution had many campuses, educators could be more specific in their details. Take a flight school. As students enter the area, they could be informed of current wing directions and availability of runways. The drawback here is that students would all need to have mobile devices that are online and have a GPS receiver. Furthermore, certain privileges have to be granted on the user end to allow this technology to be truly beneficial. Conclusion Overall, geofencing is a unique niche market mobile tool that would be used for a number of specific purposes. The drawback of having to enable power-consuming GPS receivers on a mobile device, along with the need to grant location privileges, tend to limit its general uses. Yet, for the end users who have agreed willingly, or through the need of a specific business or educational institution, geofences provide exceptionally valuable data to its caretakers about who is coming and going from a specific location. One could speculate that once battery life of mobile devices, such as smartphones, increases to the range that users do not need to worry about power consumption, this technology will become more widespread.